Um, I guess I'm interested to know how well the government is taking care of you now that they put you in this situation. Uh, are you getting good medical care at the VA? It's uh, getting a little better. It used to be pretty bad, but uh, they've uh, taken great steps to improve the uh, VA, or so I've been told. And what about uh, the mental trauma? Of course, they the reports are that the, at least hundreds of thousands of American soldiers, especially uh, the guys doing uh, tour after tour, uh, have these problems with uh, what they now call post-traumatic stress disorder, shell shock. Uh, do you suffer from that kind of thing as well? Uh, a little bit. Not not as severely as uh, some of the uh, cases you may have seen earlier on TV. Like, I mean, I get agitated a bit easier, and when things don't go out, I think they should. I tend to get a little more pissed off than I would have before, so I have mild PTSD. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in the documentary, they uh, explain how your relationship with your wife deteriorated as part of the consequences of your injuries, but I, I read something on the internet this morning that said that you now have a new live-in girlfriend and, and things are looking up on that front for you. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I do, and she's a good girlfriend. That's good. Um, you know, one thing that they uh, that uh, Phil Donahue and, and Ellen Spiro mixed in with your story uh, in the movie Body of War is footage of uh, Senator Robert Byrd, who, of course, in your meeting with him, but also clips of many other senators uh, and and a catalog of the votes. And it really struck me uh, in watching that compiled C-SPAN footage uh, how well so many of uh, the uh, opposition in Congress spoke of the issue and the uh, the clarity of their warnings, of their dismissals of the phony intelligence, of uh, their anticipation of what negative results uh, could be. There really was no excuse, was there, for any of the congressmen or senators who voted for this war to have done so in the face of their own colleagues telling them the plain truth to the contrary. Well, what you have to realize is that uh, the debate took place three weeks before an election. And uh, the country as a whole wanted a uh, flood in some form or fashion. So if uh, you came out against the war at that time as a senator or congressman, you thought you might lose your Senate seat. Hmm. Well, that must uh, be a nice consolation to you, right, that uh, some congressman got to hang on to their seat and you just had to pay with uh, your spinal cord. They get to keep uh, working in their Christian offices and uh, 5,000 plus American soldiers dead. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, too, you bring that up, that fear of uh, losing their congressional seats. Uh, my favorite congressman, Dr. Ron Paul, is a Republican from Texas, and he voted against the war and still walked right back into his House seat because he had the courage of his convictions. And even though the people of his uh, district uh, favored the war and favored the president, they also knew that uh, Ron Paul meant what he said and said what he meant, and so they sent him back to Congress anyway. Right. So maybe the rest of these congressmen didn't really have anything to fear but fear itself. Well, see, there was a uh, Republican senator named... Uh, Lincoln Chafee mm -hmm. voted against the war and didn't have a job anymore because he was a Republican who voted for the war. Mm -hmm. the yeah. War. yeah, well, um, yeah, there are certainly examples both ways. And then, geez, they went after that one congressman who'd lost his arms and legs in Vietnam and put him on TV next to Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein to get rid yeah. of him. Forgot his name. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's uh, Max Cleveland. Right, right. Uh, well, now tell me about your meeting with uh, Senator Robert Byrd. He really did give a heroic speech on the Senate floor before this war, didn't he? Yes, he did. And and what was it like meeting him? Did you, how did that go? It was a uh, it was a great.
great experience. It was like, uh, I guess, uh, if I win a fancy type movie, it'd be like winning the, uh, wise old wizard to see the movie. He, uh, was just, uh, Within the first five minutes, I wanted to be my uh, adoptive grandfather. He was just a very uh, nice man, very compassionate about the things he uh, believed in. And he was just uh, an all-around great guy. Well, and so uh, I guess tell me about your um, your work with the Iraq veterans against the war. Are you still uh, doing a speaking tour there? Yeah, in fact, uh, tomorrow in uh, Columbia, Missouri, at, at Mizzou, uh, Saturday, actually, uh, I will be uh, giving a speech at an uh, anti-war rally. And uh, what can you tell people about Iraq veterans against the war in general? There may be some veterans listening. Well, we're a uh, non-profit group made up of both Democrats and Republicans, and uh, we just uh, want to uh, end the occupation in both Afghanistan and Iraq. And uh, we're uh, just trying really hard through different actions and flyers and anything we can do to try to uh, change public sentiment. Well, and there's there's a lot of um, kind of support between veterans. They're taking care of each other, right? Right. Because, you know, I don't really know about this. I'm not uh, a veteran myself, but I've read many times that veterans feel that that citizens who have not been to war just cannot relate, and they just don't know. Uh, they can't. They feel like they just can't talk to people who aren't also veterans about the things they're going through, that kind of thing. So having something like Iraq Veterans Against the War and, you know, Iraq Veterans for War and whatever, the, all those organizations, uh, whatever the rest of them are called, that... Uh, that help these soldiers out with their personal problems when they get home, I think is, you know, important to emphasize that those things are available to people. Yeah. Can you uh, give some advice to young people listening? Chaos Radio in Austin has a pretty young audience, and there may be uh, some people, you know, who think that, um, well, never mind honor and glory and valor and all those things. That's all worn pretty thin, but at least, um, you know, they'll make a man out of you and, and uh, be all you can be and, and all that kind of great stuff uh, from the TV commercials. Uh, you'll get to play with remote control planes all day, that kind of stuff. Can you can you address those youngsters and what they might need to know about war that they might not know yet? The, the most important advice I can give to any uh, young man or woman thinking about enlisting is to wait. The military is a uh, very honorable place to be as long as it is used properly. Mm-hmm. So wait until what? The the Iraq war is over? Or? Yeah, wait till this ridiculousness has died down. And we're finally in a place where we're not fighting arbitrary wars and go back to... Uh, Defending the Constitution instead of uh, trying to create democracies where democracy doesn't necessarily want to be. All right. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you joining me on uh, the sixth anniversary of the invasion of Iraq, Thomas. Um, Thank you. All right, everybody. That's Thomas Young from Iraq Veterans Against the War. It's the subject of the award-winning documentary Body of War, directed by Ellen Spiro and Phil Donahue, and this is Anti-War Radio. We'll be right back.